Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna take a look at a trail camera from the company Woe Sports. Now Woe Sports having a number of different products for the outdoor shooting and I would say hunting application. Now Woe Sports does have a number of items good for like golf and different outdoor activities, but in this case, we're looking at more of their hunting products. And here, the G600 trail camera. Now they have a few different models. This one's sort of in the middle of the line. They do have some nicer ones. They do have some sort of lesser quality ones, but there's something about this one that kind of catches my attention. And we're gonna get into that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at this in detail. I'm gonna set it up in a few locations and really try to get us some, hopefully, images of nature. That is one thing that I've come to enjoy about these trail cameras. For me, just having the ability to actually get some good footage, the infrared capability, and the nighttime visibility to different things while you're out in the wilderness. And so again, whether or not it's around my house or whether it's out in the woods, it's my goal right now to capture some good wildlife, some good nature, and see if this trail camera is capable of catching it on film. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you are interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Woe Sports who did provide this for a review. Now, again, the G600 trail camera. So in the past, I have started dabbling in trail cameras. That's the thing about really getting into firearms that comes with the sort of interest in all the other accessories and all the other gear that comes with it. Now in the past I did take a look at this Dassun trail camera. This was the H8203. Uh, mixed results. I have used this quite a bit actually at this point after my review and I'm starting to get some familiarity but this really sort of set the tone for what I now know or I've been I'm saying what I now know, it's still very limited, so don't get me wrong, but what I do now know about some of the things with trail cameras. Now, getting into this G600, this is a little different than other models that I've seen in the past, and I do like that about this. We're gonna break this out of the box, take a look at it in detail, and then we're gonna get it set up outside. So now breaking everything out of the box, here you can see the packaging, very straightforward. It does come with your informational pamphlet. So again, here the Woe Sports G600 trail camera. Comes with a 32 gigabyte memory card, so that's awesome. A tree strap mounting bracket, some wall shields and some screws, and the actual camera itself. So again, the G600 here in this really nice camo. I love this green look. I like that it's subdued. This just sort of screams my style and I definitely like it. Now, as we look at the features on this, again, we talked about the housing. Very nice. I do like it. Feels to be pretty durable for the most part from what I can tell. Seems to be a solid construction and it feels very nice. Here you have your LED array on the side. So on each side, the LED array. On the top, your camera lens, some side sensors here. So these are side sensors. And then your latch. And this is what I'm saying when you look at this, it's a little different from other units out there. If you notice, just the bottom hinges open, which is awesome, and it displays your little LCD screen. And I bring that up because it is fundamentally different than the Dassun. When you look at the Dassun, again, very nice. I do like it. It's a nice camera, but when you do this, watch, you hinge it open. Well, look what's happening to your actual camera lens. Your lens is hinging all the way out. So you can't effectively see what your aim is. It's hard to aim this camera. So even though I do like the Dassun, I've made some errors in my setup and I haven't actually captured exactly what I wanted. So this does have a little bit of a deficiency, but the Woe Sports, the G600 here, definitely eliminates that. So as I set this up, I'm literally just hinging open the bottom, which is awesome. And it does give me the ability to literally look at the LCD screen and see exactly where the camera lens is pointing. Now I have not put the batteries in this just yet. So I'm gonna take a minute, we're gonna get the batteries into this, take a look at the menu and see how easy it is to get this programmed. And just real quick, before I do that, check this out. So cool, I love this right here eject button. Boom. Here is your battery tray. The ability to pull the tray out, very simple, no problem, and then pop it back in. That is sweet. So eject button, slide that out. 
That is just mint. I love that. And so now eight fresh AA batteries, installing that there. On the side, you can see I have installed the memory card. So very straightforward, just pop that into place. Turning this on to the middle, that is the aim button. And you'll see getting everything going, looking right back at the camera there. Now, if you hit the bottom, that is your mode. So very straightforward, you go down through the mode. So mode button, resolution for photo, resolution for video, some different things like, for example, the length. So I have that set to one minute clips. Real quick, talking about the video resolution, this is 1920 by 1080p. So this is basic HD. This does not go to 4K or anything like that. My other model did. This resolution actually is gonna be probably perfectly fine for me. We'll see the quality when we get it back. Hopefully I'll get some footage. Audio we have turned on. There is a microphone on the bottom here. So as you look at the very bottom of this, that little hole that is the microphone. Turning on the side motion sensors, you can turn those on or off. You can set your sensor level, which I have to the middle right now. There's a time-lapse mode and a couple of different things you can set. I do have it so this puts the timestamp on the actual image itself. So we'll see how that works out. And so one thing to talk about on the mode, you do have the ability to put this to photo, video, or photo and video. So I have it on both right now. Hopefully that will work out for me and not totally kill the battery or the memory card size, but we'll see as we get into it. So again, very straightforward. I do like this. It seems to be fairly quick and even on startup as you look here, pretty quick, you get that little splash screen and you're up and running. So very fast, turning it off really quick. This thing seems nice. So, so far, I am definitely impressed. Again, the mode's very simple. And as we look at the construction, very nice. Everything on here seemingly sound. So I am going to leverage the tree strap. As you see here, I'm gonna leverage the tree strap, get this around and hopefully get some footage. You do have the ability to put a little lock on here if you needed to. So this is set up, but at this point, let's get it outside and hopefully I'll get myself some wildlife footage. So now the setup on this pretty straightforward, like most trail cameras, just leveraging the tree strap, no problem. Wrapping it around and pretty much just threading it through the buckle. Now this is a little bit suspect. I don't think it's gonna be a problem and probably won't, but if you weren't careful, it could loosen up. I'm kind of just gonna keep that nice and tight there. And this seems to be okay. It's sagging down just a little bit, but it seems sturdy enough. Now I do know there's a ton of rabbit activity. So I have this set at a nice height. I'm gonna try to bait them in here and see how it goes. So the nice thing here again, as I mentioned, undoing the latch, you do have the ability to turn this on and right away you can see literally what you're looking at. So, hey, coming right back at you there, getting the camera set up. As I slide to the side, you see my hand here. That's going to be about perfect. So that should trigger this nicely. Now, just simple. I'm going to put this to on. It's going to give me a little countdown timer. Let's get this closed and just watch this for a second. Now, this should pick me up and give me my very first video clip if I stay here. Now that that's done blinking, it should have at least some level of indication that it's filming me. I'm gonna do a couple walk-bys real quick just to test it and see how it works out. And so to download all of the images and footage off of the trail camera, you will need a micro USB. It does not come with it. I happen to have one, I use them all the time because my camera, even though it's a modern camera, still uses an antiquated connector. So that's the one thing you can see here. It actually is gonna come right up as a drive right quick. So that's easy, no problem. And that's even while it's in the off position. It's filming me. I'm gonna do a couple walk-bys real quick just to test it and see how it works out. So now with the G600 set up, this was a very easy setup and getting it ready for some action. There were a few times when there were clips that for some reason, I don't know why, but there was no activity. Maybe it caught a branch, maybe it caught some leaves. I'm not really too sure, but it didn't happen too much. And for the majority of the clips, there was definitely some wildlife. And even at that, well, you can see it caught me going out on a booze run. Had to get myself some drinks. So as I was slinking out the door and hopping in my truck, it did pick me up from a distance. And obviously, well, it caught me coming home. So this did seem to have a reasonable range overall and did pick up my activity. Now, again, at nighttime, there were a couple of clips that for some reason happened to trigger, but for the most part, a success. 
Here you can see the rabbit I was looking for. I knew there was going to be some activity here, and I caught him. And even more interesting, well, I caught the neighborhood skunk. I did not necessarily expect to see him, but he was there. And rolling in some of the photos, remember, this is taking both video footage, but also photographs at the same time in this particular setup. So it did an okay job. Not the best resolution, but enough to see what's going on. Now here's that rabbit again turning into the daytime, a good amount of activity. Actually, if you look around, there's a bunch of birds, the rabbit having himself a nice breakfast here. Now, one thing that I think is funny is it does say that it's 50 degrees outside if you look at the annotation on the bottom of the screen. I don't believe that's the case. For some reason, these cameras do seem to report a lot warmer than it really is. I found that to be the case with other cameras I've used in the past, and that's definitely the case with the Woe Sport here. But not a big deal. The best part about it, getting some real nice footage of the rabbit, himself having a good old time here. He seems to maybe be beaten out by this Blue Jay as the Blue Jay swoops in for himself. He wants to get himself a nice little breakfast treat. Good wildlife, very interesting, and a lot of really nice imagery with the Woe Sports G600. Now again, the rabbit coming back into frame, jumping over the edge of the camera. I thought that was kind of cool. And what you can see here as I turn the corner, again, looking at the photograph. So not just the photos at night, but here you can see photographs in the daytime. Fairly reasonable, good enough to see what's going on. Again, not the highest resolution, but it is definitely ample. It caught the rabbit in a couple of different positions, and definitely you can tell what's going on. Now again, a number of birds, you can see there's a bunch of wildlife out here, a number of different types of birds. I believe these are some sort of a starling or something like that. They seem to be enjoying themselves and getting themselves some berries for breakfast. Now here you can see not just the rabbit, but in the corner of your screen, a nice male cardinal. In the bottom of your screen, there's the female. So this cardinal pair bopping around, I do see them from time to time throughout my property. They seem to live in the area. And again, they're enjoying this area for some nice breakfast treats. There's going to be something in the ground that they're eating here because I did not throw any seeds around or anything like that. And there's definitely a ton of bird activity. Here are the morning doves. The morning doves are all over the place. They're pretty cool. I like this particular clip because it does get close enough to really see its colors and some of the details in its feathers. But there are a bunch of them just kind of working their way around the property. And here you can see early in the morning, 7.22 a.m. That's another thing. It's nice having the timestamp on this camera. I do like it. And it did not seem to stray off at all from where I had set it. So that works out very well. And the fact that it is marked on the camera, you can turn that on or off. I did opt to leave that on. I think it's useful, at least in this case, to know what time you're seeing the footage, what time the animal activity happens. And if you were using this for the hunting application, I think that might actually be critical information to have stamped on your footage. Now, again, just pointing out that every now and then I would get sort of a blank clip. Not a big deal here, just another one of them. There's not too much going on. Maybe just a couple of leaves blowing by or maybe the branches in the corner of the screen triggering this. I'm not too sure why, but definitely in this case, no animal activity. But speaking of animals, well, here's my kids. Everybody's awake now, it's time to start our day. So the footage here, definitely cool. You can see us as we get ready to move on and that was very effective. So camera setup number one, I would call that a success. Now camera setup number two, I did this intentionally because I knew there would be more birds and I knew there would be the squirrels and that's absolutely the case. So this squirrel here, he's pretty cool. You'll notice in some of this footage, there's actually a lot of detail and a lot going on. So it was really cool to see this. I was glad to have this set up where it was because I found out some really interesting things. And so as we watch this squirrel, you'll see he's got himself a little bit of a plan. Now he was definitely sitting here munching on bread. He was munching on lettuce. But the thing that he absolutely liked the best, I had some almonds in here. So I put a number of different food out to see what it would attract. And well, here you can see pulling in the crows. Crows are really interesting birds. Check out his mannerisms. I think the bird immediately knew there was something going on. He seems very skittish and aware that there's something maybe even keeping an eye on him. So you'll see, he takes his food and carries it away and brings it off into the distance. But what about that squirrel? Look at him. He's out there, he's digging, he's making himself a hole. Well, guess what? He's taken the almonds 
carrying them off into the distance and burying them in the mulch bed, coming back for more, filling the pouches in his cheeks, and then again, taking the almonds off. You'll see, he's digging through, he'll find them, there you go, stuff them in those cheeks, grab another one, and he'll carry them off to bury them. The crow, again, watch his mannerisms. Really, really cool. He's looking at the camera. He knows it's there. He's not going into the pile, rather picking at it from the outside. He's trying to find those almonds. He's putting them in his mouth, and you'll see he tries to gather up absolutely as many as he can. But you can tell he's just nervous, a little skittish. There's something going on. I think he can absolutely tell that the camera's here on the tree. So as he's moving around, kind of taking a look, not too sure what to do, moving around the outside of the pile, finding those almonds, and well, you'll see, he's definitely trying to beat that squirrel, get as many as he can, and take advantage. But as he picks him up, you'll see at this point, he's had five or six, the squirrel comes back in, and well, they're fighting for a little bit of dominance. But the crow, I think, has a little bit of an advantage. For some reason, he seems to be taking territory this is his. Look at him trying to get these almonds. He is stuffing as many in his mouth as he absolutely can. He does not want to give them up to that squirrel. Now this is one of my favorite clips of this entire sequence. Notice the squirrel. He's getting as many of these almonds as he can. He's filling up his cheek pouches and well he's going to take off across the yard. Now I've seen squirrels do this but I've never really paid close attention. He's going to dig himself a hole Get it nice and deep, at least as deep as he can possibly go. He's putting those almonds on the inside. And what I found the most incredible, just after he's done depositing them, he's filling the hole back in and he's tamping it down. It's the way he's tamping down on top of the hole. Get it nice and compact so his almonds are going to be good and safe and probably there either in the fall or the winter when he needs them. But he's getting ready, that's for sure. And my final setup, well, setup number three was not the most successful, just getting some quick clips of a couple other squirrels, and that's about it. So with that said, that's the G600 from Woe Sports. Very, very nice. So there you have it, the G600 from Woe Sports. Again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Woe Sports for providing this for review. That footage was fun. It was actually really nice to get the animals, to get the birds, to see some surprising guests. I did not expect that skunk to come wandering through, but it was cool that it did. And well, that definitely proves that this works fairly well. Now, did I have some clips that had no activity and for some reason maybe the trees were catching it? Yeah, that happened. But for the most part, I'd say it was pretty good. On the average, I had way more clips with animals than not. The photo quality, decent. The video quality, decent. Not the best. I would like to have a little more sharpness, a little more quality, and the frame rate seems to be a little bit off, but not a big deal. It definitely proves what you need to see. I mean, that is the first thing. These are made to simply give you an indication of where you're going to have activity, especially for hunting. So in that case, this did work very well. And so I like it. I am very happy with this. I like the quality. I love love, love the setup. I was able to get this set up almost perfectly the way I want. So that worked out extremely well. So generally speaking, I can say I do like this. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more on the hiking, camping, and backpacking genre. On that channel, I have everything from my sleep systems, shelter systems, backpacks, knives, axes, flashlights, you name it. That's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.